Aging is a challenging area of research. Uh, and uh, scientists have thought about the cause of aging and uh, the lifespan for centuries. But to this day, we don't have a clear answer what the aging is, what the cause of aging is. Is it a program? Is it a stochastic process? Um, has aging evolved? Has it been maintained or not? There have been many theories that proposed uh, what the aging is. Uh, however, they describe only some elements of aging. None of them seem to fully cover the aging process and uh, there are various opinions in the field so the scientists basically are split uh, uh, among uh, uh, contradictory ideas. So one of the first ideas that was proposed uh, to explain aging is called program theory of aging. It was proposed by August Weismann in the 19th century. So he basically said that um, uh, aging is programmed. There is a particular program that evolved, has been maintained and uh, is still present which is needed for organisms to age and eventually die, and this would benefit the future generations of that species. However, uh, uh, none of the genes is yet to be found which causes aging, specifically designed for the cause of aging. And that uh, uh, theory also is inconsistent with the evolutionary logic. So evolutionary theory is another e theory, and uh, uh, those ideas have been proposed by excellent scientists Medawar and Williams. They basically suggest that uh, the, the, uh, the uh, forces of natural selection, they decrease with aging. So as organisms age, forces decrease. And as a result, uh, mutations could accumulate in the genomes, or genes could be preserved, which would benefit younger organism, but would be detrimental in the old one. So, for example, a gene could, you know, originate, which could help, you know, in the reproductive age, but later that gene could cause some damage or, you know, could be detrimental in some other way. And this would, but would not be important during evolution because the organism already reproduced, so everything is fine, so it would die. There's no consequence for the species. That, that theory, you know, makes sense. However, uh, it's unclear... Um, why uh, genes, how genes could have these two different functions? How can they switch from being a good gene to the, to the bad gene? Another theory called free radical theory of aging uh, has a very clear message. So basically it's a molecular theory. It says that uh, partially reduced species of oxygen like hydrogen peroxide, superoxide radical, hydroxyl radical and other species, they are very dangerous. So they are byproducts of metabolism. They are made and then they uh, react with cellular molecules, DNA proteins and sugars and so on. And they cause damage. Damage accumulates, organism dies. So that's a very clear uh, uh, hypothesis. However, the problem is it's unclear why this particular uh, damage is considered a primary damage. Why not other types of damage? So this uh, problem has been recognized and other scientists like Orgel, for example, they proposed uh, to consider uh, the cumulative damage, kind of total damage that is generated. Still, it doesn't explain um, the cause of aging, and, and it's unclear why uh, this damage cannot be fully removed from cells, and why cells actually generate that damage, why they wouldn't just stop it. So there are other theories uh, which, which have been proposed to address that weakness, and, and the most prominent one is called the disposable soma. It was proposed by Thomas Kirkwood in uh, 1977. He proposed that organisms have limited resources, and those resources can be uh, distributed between reproduction and maintenance. Maintenance basically means protection against the damage. So because uh, 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 in resources must be invested into reproduction, the maintenance cannot be 100% efficient. And because it's not 100% efficient, damage accumulates, resulting in aging and death. But the problem is, it's unclear why resources uh, need to be limited, and uh, also why organisms which uh, have plenty of resources, for example, they have plenty of food, live shorter than organisms uh, under caloric restriction, which have less resources, yet you know, they live longer. And some theories, they reject the idea of damage altogether. There is a recent theory called hyperfunction theory by Mikhail blagans and he says that aging is a continued development. 
basically uh, organism develops and uh, those processes continue uh, and at certain point you know once reproduction you know has been reached uh, those signals do not stop they kind of continue and eventually they cause hypertrophy and uh, organ damage and eventually organism dies but here is also a problem because uh, because we know that some, at least some signals uh, clearly stop. For example, humans uh, grow and at a certain point they stop growing. So why not other systems that, that can, cannot be stopped completely? So basically, all, all together, it's clear that there are various theories and uh, all of them make sense, but also there are questions and counter-arguments against those theories. And so in the end, we still don't, don't know what the cause of aging is. I think that idea defining the cause of aging or the causes of aging is very, is very important. It's actually the most critical question in the aging field. So how can we define? I think it's important to separate the cause of aging from the rate of aging. Most researchers or most studies in the field, they address the question, can we uh, delay, uh, like delay aging? Can we increase lifespan? So we can, for example, when we manipulate genes or have some dietary interventions which extend lifespan. But those studies basically only tell that we can manipulate the genes and these are amenable, amenable to um, regulation of lifespan, but it doesn't really tell about the cause of aging. So imagine a river. Okay? A river goes from the source to the ocean. And let's say a lifespan is the time uh, the water is for the water to flow from the source to the to the ocean. Yeah. We can change that time by build, building a dam or, or placing a river in, in, in a different path. For example, uh, when it's on the more surface, uh, on the flat surface, it, it would flow longer. In the mountains, it would, would be much much faster. Yeah. So we can change those parameters, but they would not tell us the reason why the river flows. Yeah? The reason the river flows is gravity. In the same way, in the aging field, by changing lifespan, uh, we do not necessarily learn about uh, the ultimate cause of aging. Yeah? And, and this question is it's very critical in the aging field. So to understand this, let's consider an enzyme. So enzyme, uh, is composed of 20 amino acids. All proteins are composed of about 20 amino acids and, and cofactors. The active sites of enzymes are, are quite, quite good, but they are not perfect. And therefore, enzyme uh, would necessarily produce something else. Occasionally, it would react with uh, another substrate, producing another product, or reacting with its own substrate, but producing uh, some byproduct. This could be, you know, one percent or one millionth of percent or one billionth of percent. But sooner or later, there will be some damage or byproduct produced. So, if one enzyme produces this, all enzymes will will produce these byproducts as well. So, these uh, byproducts, uh, in, in a form of damage, uh, would result not only from enzymes but from all proteins. This will be due to protein-protein interaction, errors in translation, errors in transcription, uh, differences in gene expression. So basically, this uh, damage would, uh, would be produced at every level, from single molecules to cellular compartments, to cells, to organs, and so on. How could cell uh, deal with uh, this flood of damage? So the cell has found a very elegant solution to this problem. So instead of removing all damage which is produced in the cell, cell can remove only the most serious, severe damage. For that, there are specific enzymes and transporters uh, which can remove that damage. And basically, it ignores all other damage. Uh, slightly, slightly deleterious damage uh, can be ignored. Why? Because cell, cells divide. So once cells uh, has divided, that damage is diluted. So be, so so into two cells. And so if the damage accumulates very slowly, cells can simply divide and, and ignore the damage. So this strategy has been used by cells and organisms for millions and billions of years. And prokaryotes has used it and single cell eukaryotes. But then multicellular organisms evolved and animals and plants and so on. And then it's a problem. So once an organism has non-renewable, uh, uh, post-mitotic non-renewable cells, which cells cannot be renewed, so they cannot use that strategy to dilute the damage. The damage will accumulate and, and cells eventually will die. This means that the organism will die too. So apparently, uh, if, this is, if this is the case, this means that uh, organisms 
like mammals and humans, they will necessarily die, unfortunately. So not much can be done about it. However, theoretically, it's possible that some organisms may live forever. Such organisms would be able to uh, renew their cells uh, completely, for example, from stem cells. Organisms like certain planaria or uh, some other organism possibly might do it. But for humans, it's not, it's not possible. However, it's still very important to, to study aging. And um, why? Because uh, most of biomedical research uh, deals with, uh, uh, with diseases cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and so on. But all of these diseases are the diseases of aging. They are basically the consequence of aging, and, and aging is the most significant risk factor for these diseases. So by understanding aging, uh, we, you know, the, the process of aging and uh, process of accumulation of damage, how it is actually produced, how can we delay the production of damage, I think this offers the best chance in the long term to delay all of the all of those most severe diseases. Well, in the aging field, there are still many many open questions. Uh, as I said, uh, it's unclear what the ultimate cause of aging, what defines lifespan. For example, when organisms are subjected to caloric restriction, which effectively works in, in a variety of model organisms, what exactly happens is that the number of damage forms uh, decreases or the rate. Uh, of the accumulation decreases. I think it's, it's, it's probably a combination of the, of the type of damage and the rate of damage accumulation. So probably uh, metabolism, cellular metabolism can, can be restructured by, by those manipulations, dietary or genetic interventions, uh, so that the cumulative damage is, dif is different. So if this is the case, then we cannot look at any one particular damage, whether it's oxidative damage or DNA damage. None of them will be representative. Only the cumulative damage uh, is important. But then the question is, how can we study cumulative damage. There are no good methods yet. If, for example, five molecules is produced in the cell, those five molecules accumulate, how can we access that? But I think uh, recently methods have, have been developed, like metabolomics, high throughput sequencing, uh, various technology, technologies involved in regeneration, which, which possibly will be able to help to address these questions. And uh, I, I think there will be a significant progress in the near future in addressing these questions.